one more lock to go crow's nest lock and then no more until wheel lock So far, I have to say, this has been extremely pleasant. Quite pretty. This is luxury, my own helpers. Well, hopefully then, I'm gonna find a mooring along here. And thank you to my viewers there. I didn't get your names. But it was great meeting you. And you were a huge help in getting through those locks. Now about three and a half miles before we lock and no locks. Fabulous private moorings here. Just talking to one of the Maurice and said what a fabulous spot it was and she told me the price I won't say what it is but per week it's about the same as a I'd say a filling Chinese takeaway for one per week I couldn't believe it and no there isn't any availability If I could find somewhere to moor around here, I think my winning ticket had come up. So far, one word keeps popping into my head. 
pretty. That sun's right in my face and I'm struggling to see anything. And the first moored boat I've encountered on the towpath. So does that mean there's moorings around here? I was told it's right next to a railway though. But I'm not one to let little things like that dictate where I moor. Noise I can deal with. Some more boats down here. Well, what do you know? Rings. Quite delightful.
Good morning. And today the plan is to just quite literally do about a mile and a half to wheel lock to a boat a service point because I just have a bag of rubbish to get rid of. And I'm planning to moor up somewhere there just before the two locks. As for the next three days, the weather's going to be quite abysmal. And Wheelock also happens to be situated right before the start of a run of about 26 to 30 locks before Hare Castle Tunnel. A stretch of the canal known historically as Heartbreak Hill. I could have stayed at that mooring for a few days at least. I've, I've got enough food supplies. Uh, but as I say, for the next three days, you know, tomorrow, what is it today? It's Sunday today, isn't it? So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to chuck it down. And then I'll have run out of food before then. So to avoid moving in the rain, I'm going down to Wheelock. And hopefully there's somewhere to moor up near there. And... Yeah, that would be a good excuse to do some editing for a change. <laughs> it's a good job I like editing, isn't it? It's like painting to me. Well, I never. Just around a couple of bends and the first real bit of Armco I've seen since I started this stretch of the Trenton Mersey. Apart from up at King's Lock, of course. I might show a lot of bridges throughout my travels, simply because I like them. I like the skill involved in the various designs. And I can appreciate the obvious time and hard work involved in building them. in the very outer edge of Wheelock. Well, that's just typical, isn't it? I get into Wheelock itself and the Armco runs out. Very nice, very nice indeed, Mildred. 
and I've taken a little stroll and there just happens to be some very nice 48 hour moorings with rings just around this corner. Somewhere just after this boat will do. Perfect, just perfect. Heading backwards this morning, about 50 yards, to the water point, which I passed before I moored up here the other day, just to top off my water tank. Because of their design, canal boats don't tend to reverse flat well. Going forwards, they're extremely responsive, because the water is being thrust through the rudder. However, in reverse, the water is being thrust forward, which means it ain't going through the rudder. Hence, no steering input. So it's more a case of go back a bit, a bit of forwards to straighten her up, and then back some more. Reversing is something I try to avoid. Though, of course, on occasion, I have no choice such as getting back to the water point. A tranquil few days at Wheelock, a village which has sadly suffered the same fate as countless others around the country, due to bypasses. The local residents campaigned for one over the years, and eventually one is built. 
and the local residents are happy, except for local commerce. With relatively zero through traffic, passing trade all but dries up. Some, however, do manage to eke out a living, such as in Wheelock. Onward then, and approximately seven miles to the entrance of Harecastle Tunnel. Only seven miles, but between me and thee is the small matter of 26 locks. A stretch of the Trenton Mersey, historically referred to by the old working boaters as the Cheshire Flight, but now more widely known, quite simply, as Heartbreak Hill. I won't be doing all of those today, I can tell you. At the moment, I'm looking at doing between five and eight. But we'll see how it goes, eh? Well, at least, yeah, at least they, they picked the spot with a bin, didn't they? So long, Wheatlock. Well, the sun had got out. But now it's not looking so good. Well, we'll see how it goes. A fabulous idea that's been suggested to me exhaustively. I don't know. I don't think it quite suit the lines of Aslan. <laughs> A feature of these 26 locks, all the way to Harecastle, besides being narrow, is that as far as I know, they're all in pairs. An ingenious solution, back in the days of canal commerce, to the very real problem of bottlenecks at locks. Also today, I'll be bringing along my trusty Leica MD Type 262, the screenless digital camera, full frame, with a Leica Elmerit uh, Mark III 28mm f2.8 M mount lens. And we'll see what shots we can get. In case anyone's wondering why I went in to this lock and not the other one, simply because this was the closest. And I'm going to try something which was suggested to me when I went through the four locks at Middlewich, which is to move Aslan right up to the sill when going up a lock. Though obviously not when I'm going down, that would be suicide. Well, I never. The rope is very slack. 
and the boat is neither going forwards or backwards. Yeah. I now have both paddles open and my initial report is it's a lot less traumatic. Onward to the next one and this lady has been stood here for a while I wonder if she's going to close the gates at least and maybe even do the locks. Who knows? Yep, she's going to do the paddles for me. Only on the canals will you experience that level of kindness and generosity. In my experience, at least. Getting a fine workout here. Was that number three? I think so. But I failed to realise it's right next doors to a golf driving range. Somebody needs to work on their game. Oh, I've got these two people here have uh, turned up and they're doing a the lot for me. My, my, it's Richard and Fran from Floating Our Boat. Hiya, Kevin. How you doing, mate? Very good. I don't do that for everybody, you know. 